Hi there and welcome to another book review. Today I am talking about Stars in Your Eyes by Case and Callender. If you're thinking about checking out Stars in Your Eyes yourself, you don't have to worry about spoilers in this video. The first parts of my videos are always spoiler free, so you can decide if this book is your cup of tea. After a quick summary and a basic review, I will give a full rundown and then a deep dive into my thoughts and opinions on this book. Here are some content warnings for Stars in Your Eyes by Case and Callender. Stars in Your Eyes by Case and Calendar is a queer fake dating romance that takes place on the set of a movie. Logan Gray is the bad boy persona of Hollywood, doing drugs, getting into fights, and showing up to set late. Though he's a talented actor, his behavior often gets him into trouble. Maddie Cole, on the other hand, is the complete opposite, being a newcomer to the scene, but a golden boy nonetheless. Compared to Timothy Chalamet and Tom Holland, Maddie is a sweet and lovable heartthrob from the South. This book follows Logan and Maddie as they get into a fake relationship to help with publicity for the movie. Things start out rocky, but through the fake dating scheme and plenty of time filming together, it seems like the two of them might just fall into a real relationship. But baggage from the past is ever prevalent and might just drag the two of them apart. Before I give my rating, let's do a quick run through of my rating system. One star means that I could not finish the book. Two stars means that I struggled to finish, but I did. Three stars means it was good, I enjoyed it. Four stars means I really liked it and I might even recommend it to a friend. And five stars, which is my highest honor, means that I would read the book again. I ended up giving Stars in Your Eyes by Case and Calendar a three star rating because while I enjoyed it, I don't think I would recommend it to a friend and I definitely will not be reading it again. There were some elements of this book that I really enjoyed, particularly some of the romantic scenes between our two main characters, but some of the writing felt a little bit stilted and awkward and there was a lot of telling and not showing. This book actually came really close to being a two-star read for me, but some of the events at the end and a little bit of more elevated writing in the last 30% of the book earned it that three-star rating. This book deals with a lot of heavy themes and has some explicit scenes that may be triggering for some people to read. If you are worried that any of these might apply to you, please make sure to check out the content warnings I provided at the beginning of the video to make sure you know what you're getting into. If you read Stars in Your Eyes and you enjoyed it, you might also like Will They or Won't They by Ava Wilder, Once More with Feeling by Alyssa Sussman, and Business or Pleasure by Rachel Lynn Solomon. We are now entering the spoiler-filled part of this video. If Stars in Your Eyes sounds like your cup of tea, now is a good time to click away, go read it, and then come back so you can engage with my deep dive on this book. If you like the sound of this book but you don't want to read it yourself, you don't have to worry because I will give you a full rundown of everything that happens. Stars in Your Eyes switches between Maddie and Logan's first-person narration and also has a sprinkling of social media, video transcripts, and excerpts from Maddie's memoir. We start with Maddie Cole entering the table read for a queer romance film called Write Anything. Maddie is playing a lead in this film and is playing opposite of Logan Gray. When Logan takes his sunglasses off at the table read, he reveals a bruise that points to a fight he had the night before. Maddie is pretty nervous during the table read because he keeps thinking about something Logan said during an interview just before they started filming for the movie. Here's an excerpt from that part. I try to block out the memory of the interview I'd seen against my better judgment, but it was everywhere, all over social media and popping up in Google alerts every three seconds. A reporter shoves a mic in Logan Gray's face on the red carpet and asks him, what do you think about Matthew Cole joining the cast of Write Anything? Logan didn't hide his annoyance. He rolled his eyes. He's a shitty actor, he said. I hate people who get by on looks and charm and absolutely zero talent. Logan is mean to Maddie about his poor performance at the table read, which makes Maddie kind of emotional and the director is forced to call for a five minute break. Maddie is trying to pull himself together in the bathroom and Julie, another actor on the film, comes in and says that they have his back and that Logan is really just unnecessarily abrasive. Logan and Maddie continue to work together on the film even though they don't like each other. Logan is in a fake relationship with a celebrity named Willow, and when the two of them decide to break it off, Willow posts a video of Logan having sex with a man. Logan is publicly out as bi, so it's not that big of a deal, but people on social media start to bash him for cheating on Willow. After this happens, the PR team for the movie gets Logan and Maddie together and convinces them they need to start a fake relationship to help fix the publicity for the movie. They think that the two of them dating will help Logan freshen up his image a little bit and might help Maddie 
you get away from a little bit of a more boring persona. Maddie ultimately agrees to go along with the fake relationship plan because he wants Logan to be in the movie because he thinks that his talent as an actor is going to help Maddie find success in his career. So the two of them start their fake relationship and the production schedule for Write Anything is compacted so that they can compete with another queer romance that is also set to come out the next summer. This forces Logan and Maddie to spend a lot more time together. Whether they're reading through their lines, filming intimate scenes, or going on some of their public dates to keep up their fake relationship, they get to know each other and start to develop feelings for one another. The two of them end up having sex and Logan tells Maddie to leave immediately after, which puts a little bit of a rift in their relationship. Later, Logan reveals that he has a long history of sexual abuse, which makes it difficult for him to be intimate with others. Maddie tells Logan that he is going to be there for Logan no matter what, and the two of them start to enter territory of a real relationship rather than a fake one. They go to an industry Halloween party together, and while there, Maddie meets Philip, who is the lead of the rival queer rom-com coming out the next summer. Maddie and Philip hit it off and start brainstorming ideas for other queer films they could be in together, and Logan gets jealous and decides to abandon Maddie at the party, going back to his apartment so that he can hook up with an old friend. When he gets to his apartment, this hookup, a guy named Briggs, is kind of rough with him and Logan changes his mind about wanting to hook up. Briggs insults Maddie and so Logan gives him a shove and tells him to get out of his apartment and Briggs shoves Logan back so hard that he falls over his coffee table and bruises his ribs. Briggs also decides not to leave and instead starts to sexually assault Logan. Logan fights back pretty viciously and ultimately gets Briggs to leave him alone and to leave his apartment. And as Briggs is leaving, he posts a video saying that Logan attacked him for no reason, putting it up on social media. Maddie is still at the Halloween party and he sees this video of Briggs claiming that Logan beat him up and Maddie makes a decision to go back to Logan's apartment to find out what's going on. Logan admits to Maddie what happened and what the actual situation was and Maddie stays with Logan at his apartment to take care of him and ultimately convinces Logan to post something sharing part of his side of the story just saying that what he did was self-defense. Logan also remembers that there is a security camera in his apartment installed by his father, and the two of them are able to find the footage of Briggs assaulting him. So Logan sends it to Briggs and says, if you don't make a public statement redacting, saying that I just attacked you, I will release this footage. After the rap party for Write Anything, Logan and Maddie take a trip out to Logan's dad's cabin where they spend some time together. After this little vacation, Maddie returns back home for the holidays and Logan goes back to his apartment. While Maddie is at home, he has to deal with his homophobic father, who tends to just not talk to Maddie or leave the room anytime his gayness is brought up. While Maddie is home for the holidays, it gets leaked that he and Logan were in a fake relationship. People on social media respond very negatively to this news, posting things saying that Maddie is a bad person and that he's dishonest and that it was really wrong for him to engage in a fake relationship for publicity. Maddie responds to these comments by making a video post in which he apologizes for doing the fake relationship and explains that he and Logan are actually genuinely together. Maddie also ends up standing up to his dad, telling him that if he can't support him in being gay, then he doesn't really love him. And his dad tells him to go ahead and get out of the house. Maddie goes on to complete the promotional tour for the movie without Logan, who was removed due to the public's negative perception of him. And Logan confronts his own father about his long history of sexual abuse that his dad was complicit in. And then Logan goes to an inpatient therapy center and gets the help that he needs. After getting out out of the rehab center, Logan moves to New York and gets a job as a barista while he spends his time writing screenplays. Deciding he doesn't want to be a movie actor anymore, Maddie also makes the move to New York after taking on a few other roles after Write Anything and becoming a lot more famous and a lot more rich. The two of them run into each other at Logan's coffee shop and they start to build a new relationship. Now that Logan has healed in therapy and Maddie has had some time to build his own career, it seems like it's finally possible for them to have a romantic relationship that's healthy and stable. This book ends with Maddie writing the memoir that we see a few snippets of throughout the story. Now that you have a full rundown, I'm going to jump into my praises and criticisms for Stars in Your Eyes by Case and Calendar. I always like to start with what I liked first about a book, and one of the aspects that I really appreciated about Stars in Your Eyes is how the book talks about intersectionality and some of the problems that both Logan and Maddie face as Black queer people in Hollywood. This book 
touches on themes and topics like racism, colorism, and queerness, and how those can affect your success as an actor. And I found these portions to be, I found these portions to be interesting, and I thought they created a more genuine profile for both of our characters. There were also several scenes between Maddie and Logan that I felt were done well. Most of the intimate scenes I thought were fairly tasteful and, and okay to read. I also really liked the scene in this book where Maddie and Logan are filming an intimate scene between their characters in the movie and this forces them to get closer and start to realize their feelings for one another. I thought that the tension and the romantic spark in this scene in particular was really well done. I really found myself liking this book more towards the end than the beginning or middle. For the most part I felt like Maddie's relationship and conflict with his dad was really well done and I really liked the end of the book when we see Maddie go and finally stand up to his dad in his office. Here's an excerpt from that part. But I want you to know that I've let go of that shame. I pause. I'm working on letting go. Anyway, I deserve to love myself for who I am. I deserve to be respected and loved and to feel free to be me. I deserve better from you. I stand there, waiting. It feels like an eternity. I'm just starting to think he's refusing to speak when he opens his mouth. You, being gay, was never right when I was young, he tells me. It was always a sin. I still think it's a sin now. If you don't accept this part of me, then you don't love me. He looks away. You're my son, he says. I love you because you're my son. I don't love this part of you. No, you can't love me if you don't love that I'm gay. And if you can't love me, then I can't have a relationship with you. He's never liked losing power. Fine, this is my house. You can leave. One thing I really appreciated about this whole scene is that after Maddie goes and packs his bags, he's walking out and his mom sees him leaving and she asks what's going on and when he says that his dad told him to get out, she goes and talks to the dad and then comes back and tells Maddie, you can stay, it's fine. To which Maddie replies, did he say that he's going to support me in being gay? And the mom falters and says no. <laughs> And so Maddie makes the decision to protect his boundaries and to leave. And I thought this was a very nuanced and well done way to depict how a lot of these situations can unfold in reality. Like I said before, I felt like the quality of the book and the writing greatly improved in the last 30% of the book. I don't know if it is because the book was attempting to adopt certain voices and tone for each character, but the writing really felt stilted and repetitive for a lot of this book, which ultimately pulled me out of the story. There was often a lot of telling and not showing and over explanation when it came to what characters were feeling. It kind of felt like this book felt it was necessary to explain to the reader why this person was feeling this or that they were feeling it after it had just depicted a scene showing us what they were feeling. Another thing that I did not appreciate about this book is how it uses sexual assault as a plot point. I can respect and even enjoy when we see a character working through past trauma even when that trauma is sexual assault but it felt like Briggs assaulting Logan in this story was something that could be considered a spoiler and I personally feel like things that are content warnings should never be spoilers because they should never be plot points to begin with. Having those kinds of topics as big plot points in the book usually makes me enjoy a book less. And as it relates to the sexual violence, another thing that I had some troubles with in this one is that I felt that Logan's dad was almost cartoonishly villainous, where Maddie's interactions and conflict with his dad feel nuanced and real. Logan's interactions and conflicts with his dad feel very black and white to the point where his dad really just feels like a straight up Disney villain. For example, some of the things we see Logan's dad do in this book is have a security camera in his home that records him doing sexual acts, calling him out of the blue just to tell him that he's a piece of shit, and putting him in situations as a child where he was being sexually abused so that Logan's dad could get more power and money. I think that I would have enjoyed this book a little bit more if we had some more depth to Logan's dad's character and a little more nuance to Logan and his dad's relationship. Stars in Your Eyes is a book that has themes of romance and themes of trauma and really does have quite a lot of triggers. This book came very close to being a two-star read for me, but some of the stuff that happens at the end ended up pulling it up to a three-star. If you don't mind reading about trauma and having complicated plot points in your stories and you like a fake dating story and you're looking for something queer or set in Hollywood, then this might be a book for you. As always, you can find links to the books that I talk about in every video in the description and you can follow me on Goodreads or Instagram to learn more about what I'm reading now and what I plan to read next. Thanks for watching!